the Qatar 2022 FIFA World Cup is definitely over. And normally, when tournaments of such caliber end, stadiums or venues turn into white elephants due to high cost of maintenance. The big question is, now that the World Cup is over, what would happen to each stadium? Indeed, this is what I'll be taking you through. We begin with the Ahmad bin Ali Stadium. Yes, Al Rayyan, one of the 12 teams in the Qatar Super League, would be hosted in the 40,000-seater stadium. And if you move straight to the Al Janoub Stadium, local club Al Wakra will continue to play matches at the facility as part of the Qatar Super League, though with a reduced capacity of 20,000 after the tournament. So that is what will happen. The Khalifa International Stadium, the oldest of the eight, having been first built in 1976, is in the heart of Doha and was extensively refurbished to accommodate 40,000 spectators. It has hosted a lot of big tournaments. The Arabian Golf Cup, the FIFA Club World Cup, the Track and Field World Championship have all taken place in this stadium. And following the World Cup or after the World Cup, the Al Khalifa Stadium will continue to host matches and big tournaments. Now, quickly to the Stadium 974, also known as the Ras Abu Abu's venue, won't end up as a white elephant. Yes, because it will no longer exist. The 974 recycled shipping containers that make up the 40,000 seat arena located on the port side just east of Doha would be deconstructed to make way for a waterfront business development. That is what the Qatari government plans to do with the venue and the Lusail Stadium. Yes, the iconic stadium where Messi won the World Cup, where the Qatar 2022 final was played. It has a capacity of 80,000 seats and an iconic gold exterior. But the unfortunate thing is that no club in the country would be able to call it home. Instead, its future is as a community center with housing units, stores, cafes, schools, and medical facilities in line with sustainable development. That is what the Qatari government uh, wants to use it for. And quickly, for new homes also in that stadium, the upper tier will serve as outdoor terracing. And the Al Bayed Stadium, yeah, the 60,000 seat Al Bayed Stadium in Al Khor City, which hosted its first match between Qatar and Ecuador on November 20, is headed to a similar destiny. After the tournament, its upper tier would be taken out to make room for additional seating repurposing. In addition to a sports medicine hospital opening, the stadium building would have a five-star hotel, a shopping mall, and other amenities. And the Al Tumama Stadium, another 40,000 seat venue close to the city's heart, would see a reduction of its seating capacity. Football matches and other sporting events would then be held in the arena. However, it is not yet known which. So on-site facilities will include a hotel and then a sports clinic. To the Education City Stadium, finally, located in the heart of Qatar Foundation's Education City, as the name implies, the stadium would be decreased in capacity to just 20,000 seats and would be used as a facility for students at the local universities. So if you asked what would happen to each stadium after the Qatar 2022 World Cup, this is what the Qatari government plans to, I mean, use this uh, stadia. And I, 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 I commend Qatar. Indeed, they had a plan before the World Cup. They had a plan during the World Cup and a plan after the World Cup.